In this uh, lecture, we will be talking about uh, reinforced soil, its principles and mechanisms. As I just mentioned in the ground improvement, we have uh, the um, use of inclusions. Inclusions means whatever you know say for example, a steel rod or anything that can be introduced to uh, give a reinforcement effect that helps in increasing the bearing capacity, reducing the settlements and increasing stability in whatever manner you want and all that. So, this is uh, one of the uh, significant uh, aspects in the soil mechanics where reinforced soil has proven to be a very useful technique in many uh, geotechnical uh, uh, problem solving approaches. I would like to just introduce uh, what is this uh, 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 stabilization and stabilization by external means and what is uh, stabilization by internal means. We are all familiar with uh, retaining walls, so for example, uh, cantilever walls or uh, gravity walls and all that. Uh, there is some force acting say because of earth pressure or because of the earthquake force and all that. We try to uh, reduce that um, or nullify that force by you know putting some sort of a, an, uh, material say for example, gravity wall. The weight of the gravity wall itself will uh, take care of the pressure acting. So, we use an external system. Uh, you have a soil, soil creates a pressure to withstand that pressure we have a gravity or a some sort of retaining system which can st uh, stand against that uh, forces. What we do is that we try to the, uh, the, the other way of handling that is that you have a soil that is creating pressure. So, put some sort of reinforcement inside because of which all that uh, uh, forces that are coming onto that. Uh, uh, retaining system or minimal or uh, negligible and uh, to the extent that uh, it is very stable also. So, what we say is that this is an externally stabilized system and uh, the other one is internally stabilized system in which you have reinforcements introduced and uh, they intersect the failure mass and uh, failure surface and uh, deflect uh, the failure surface beyond uh, higher uh, uh, you know beyond certain failure zones and uh, there uh, there will be higher shear resistance mobilized along the failure plane and uh, that helps in having higher factors of safety. So, for example, uh, there is a so you excavate 1 meter of soil and then uh, uh, then what happens is that if you excavate 1, 1 meter of soil there is a type of a wedge formation that can come there is a tendency for it to slide. So, one way is to see that you put some sort of a member external member to see that that is stable. So, you should be able to calculate what is the horizontal force and you should see that you should also calculate so that 1 meter excavation some uh, weight that can stand that horizontal force. The other one other way is that you do not allow that uh, force to develop put some reinforcement inside. So, so that the force coming on to the uh, external surface or the uh, outer surface is minimal. So, this is what we do. Like just some examples of the externally reinforced soil systems like we are familiar with uh, uh, cantilever walls or even gravity walls like this where you have a say for example, you have a potential failure surface and then you design all this uh, retaining wall for the weight of the soil here then the air pressure acting here and all that. And uh, what we do is another way is that we have a braced excavations sometimes this is a failure soil failure mass then we put some sort of braces like you have a collapse say you must have seen uh, for pipe uh, the digging you know for pipe the pipelines. So, there may be 2 meters of pipe you would like to uh, uh, put there. So, you have to just excavate little bit of 2 and a half meters on either side and 2 meters pipe you are trying to place there. So, that excavation should not cave in. So, you try to put some sort of struts like this tensile members and then at the bottom also like that you know you try to create some system where this retaining wall is stable. The other way is that you try to put some uh, there are you know this is what we call externally stabilized systems. The other way is that we see that you have a tied back like this is a failure mass we know this is a weight of the failure mass we try to put some sort of anchors here and these are all tensile elements. 
we call them as tie backs tie tie is a tension member that we know and uh, the tie tension member holds this uh, wedge say the two uh, of two reinforcements in this wedge will hold this thing and this we anchor it here you know this is called anchor you know anchoring means holding it like uh, this is a tensile element and then it is hold here because uh, you know there is a bond resistance is higher here it is held here then once you do like this then the pressure coming on this is quite less so it's an in situ wall this is called tie back wall the second thing what we do is that same as it's actually nothing but the reinforced soil like we are trying to put all these reinforcements in such a manner that the earth pressure say for example k a gamma h or k not gamma h whatever depending on the state of the soil whether it is close to earth pressure active earth pressure or it's k not okay so for example if the depth is not going to be very high it will be k not but if the depth is going to be large you know there is a tendency for the soil to uh, be in active condition and then there is a movement when the moment there is a movement that the pressure gets released okay so this is what is called reinforce that technique in which uh, say you try to uh, if this is a failure surface you try to put all these sorts of reinforcements and uh, this is one actually one should you may wonder why there are only two members here there are many numbers here the difference is that actually the uh, you know the here the tensile force requirement will be very high but the same tensile force is distributed here okay uh, that's very important and uh, uh, this is this is uh, somewhat in terms of the construction this is somewhat little expensive compared to this one that's what people have seen the other one the most uh, classical case that uh, we have been uh, very familiar with this is uh, soil nailing in the sense this is a failure surface and you put a series of nails like this so that the earth pressure is not developed so the moment the earth pressure is not developed then you don't need anything here so put simply simply some sort of uh, uh, facing and uh, then it's all right so this is all called externally stabilized systems this three and this is called internally stabilized systems and over a period of time we have seen that the stabilizing the soil using some of these techniques is much cheaper compared to this and as you increase the height say for example beyond 3 meters or 4 meters or even say for example i was telling the case of 10 meters or 15 meters definitely they are going to be 30 percent cheaper is easier to do and uh, for example here uh, as you high the increase in height is there maybe you have to go for counter foot retaining wall right here that uh, distinction is not there whether it is 10 meters or 20 meters or 30 meters same technique but you have to stagger it in some sense so that uh, uh, it is uh, the factor of safety needs to be calculated properly how this uh, soil reinforcement technique came is that uh, actually it's uh, uh, it's uh, people have been using this soil reinforcement for a time uh, from the time immemorial like you know people say that uh, even when you make ganesha idols you put some sort of fibers so that the shrinkage cracks are not there and all that here the same thing like uh, this is a, a typical uh, diagram uh, the soil reinforcement technique in the recent uh, times was discovered by uh, one henry vidal he is actually a french engineer working in uh, uh, you know in lcpc france where he went uh, with his daughter to play you know on the beach and uh, his daughter is a quite young girl and uh, she, the job her, her job was to take the sand construct a small heap like this like this you see the heap then jump on it then what happens it collapses right but then what she does was that uh, what she did for some time was that she she takes all these sort of pine needles there again jump what happens this will not collapse so he finds it very interesting and then uh, he why is he was uh, wondering why this thing is happening like you know the thing is that you can even construct uh, uh, you know the base width say for example we know that the soil angle uh, repose angle of repose is says 25 degrees so which means that you can't construct a slope beyond 25 degrees but in this case if you put this sort of uh, material ma material you are able to construct slopes up to 50 degrees which is quite interesting then even the height is also more sometimes 
So, for the same base weight height can be more or you can uh, as the angle of repose can also be more. So, that is very interesting. So, then he finds it very uh, then uh, very challenging and then goes back to laboratory and then finds that the friction between the soil and uh, say for example, the sand here is and then the reinforcement is responsible for this uh, stabilization. Why is that uh, the you have a higher angle of repose or you know higher the height is more? He was able to understand that it is because of the friction between the soil and the reinforcing element, and then that leads to some sort of tensile force mobilization because the moment there is a friction between the soil and reinforcement, um, there is a tensile force mobilization, and okay, as long as the tensile force is uh, operating like it is all right, you know, it is stable. So, he he after that he goes back to laboratory does lot of research on many varieties of uh, uh, reinforcement elements like you know it can be many things like you know uh, steel rods then uh, strips or, uh, many shapes of uh, metals and all that and comes up with a design procedure to design uh, retaining walls and to control landslides or the slope stabilization problems. In fact, the first applications of reinforced technique was in 1966 or 1969 when um, the first wall was built. In fact, uh, you can see some of these uh, figures in my book which is on soil reinforcement and geosyntics and uh, where the first time they had did this uh, thing and then they find it uh, he developed a design procedure. The design procedure is again very simple we know that the retaining wall has to be safe against uh, external uh, stability first external stability in the sense that bearing pre bearing capacity failure then sliding failure and rotational fa uh, the over turning failure all these things are there that is a standard procedure. Now, you have a reinforcement element and since you have a reinforcement element it should not lead to stability. So, he was looking at uh, so tensile uh, see the thing is now as I just mentioned the force tensile force is mobilized. So, the reinforcement will have some tensile capacity as long as this tensile capacity is more than the tensile force generated the system is safe. So, that is a factor of safety like you know say the tensile capacity is say uh, 100 tons and uh, the tensile capacity in any member is say 50 tons. So, 100 by 50 is a 2 factor of safety like there is a lot of capacity, but the factor of safety is 2 now. Similarly, that material should not come out. So, for example, this is stable, but I should not pull it out. If I pull it out, what happens? The pull out resistance is low. So, even the pull out the tensile force generated should have uh, uh, you know like as I just showed in the diagram the anchoring it should be anchored. So, it should uh, have some uh, it should not come out. So, that is called uh, there should be sufficient length of the reinforcement. So, for example, if there is a short length and if it comes out there is not uh, it is going to collapse it does not mean anything. Say for example, we have small fibers here they may be little helpful, but it is not going to be so much helpful. So, this is one important thing. So, he finds that actually this is the origin of the reinforced soil technique and after that he developed that as I just mentioned uh, went back to the laboratory and uh, perfected this technique. This is another small example uh, you put some layers of reinforcement you know in anything and you just stand on it definitely this becomes like this you know you cannot uh, you say the already you can see that his leg is embedded in soil and they, they have equal height weight volume everything is same except that uh, you have a reinforcement here everything is same except that uh, the they have a reinforcement here you can see that it is able to support his uh, whole weight, but here it is not that. So, this is actually why is it because this reinforcement element is uh, you know taking care of the friction. I will just show you that. Uh, you can see in this figure that see you have an element and you apply some load sigma 1 and uh, it attains equilibrium it goes to sigma 3 right. So, you have vertical displacement delta sigma v then horizontal displacement delta sigma h by 2 on either side ok. So, uh, this is in the case of unreinforced system like I just mentioned like this. You have a system like this and what happens the moment I put the reinforcement there is an applied load like this it, it starts acting like this then there is a resistance here 
the opposite direction. So, it does not move at all not so much you know there is a small movement, but you know the thing is to generate uh, friction it has little move little small movement is required you can just see that it is uh, delta V r delta h r by 2 you know it can be very small. So, but then you can see that there is a you know uh, it does not collapse at all like we have seen that particular figure. So, this is a principle of reinforced soil in which there is what is called this reinforcement it is like you know you are applying extra pressure confining pressure on the other side. So, that whatever is a vertical force there is a uh, uh, lateral force that is coming here right. So, that much that is what is I meant by pseudo confining pressure. So, there is a, the because of the friction between the soil and reinforcement some sort of pseudo confining pressure is introduced uh, which makes the system stable unlike this case where there is a total collapse right. So, this is a very uh, simple principle and uh, to operate it very effectively some more uh, uh, requirement is there that uh, here another example like suppose the soil as I just said it is at rest it it uh, so this is actually this is a Mohs circle uh, you know uh, the uh, this is a normal stress this is a shear stress and uh, this is a friction angle of this and uh, actually you know this is uh, as long as you know in the previous diagram we have seen that there is a vertical force and then there is a confining pressure developed which is nothing but as I just said extra confining pressure which you can say is k naught times sigma v you know lateral uh, lateral stress is k naught times sigma v. So, as long as k naught is there k naught means at pressure at rest the soil does not move, but as the moment uh, there is a small yield like if uh, say for example, if the pressure increases there is an yield what happens. So, this is actually uh, this is a sigma 1 k naught or sigma v this comes like this. So, uh, as long as the uh, Mohr circle is here below this line there is no failure right. So, you apply some more force sigma v it again mobilizes equivalent pseudo confining pressure k naught sigma v like you know I may just increase the sigma v and then again there is one more circle that can come here and it came k naught sigma v. So, as long as the circle is within this below this line it is safe, but then there is also a possibility of little yield if uh, there is a friction between the soil and all that it may touch this thing. So, essentially our objective is to see that. Uh, these two conditions like you know uh, essentially you should not uh, or it can even get uh, chopped off you know tensile failure you know it can uh, because you keep on applying higher normal stress. Say for example, if there is a slip circle here like you know you keep on increasing k naught k naught into sigma v then the failure surface if it is within this it is all right, but if it touches and then uh, there is also a little bit of yield then it leads to some sort of uh, it may touch this line. So, our objective is to see that these conditions are avoided like tensile failure should not happen and as well as the pull out failure should not happen that is the whole uh, principle. And this is another example that we would like to mention like what happens if you put reinforcement uh, say for example, sigma 1 u unreinfo unreinforced soil and then this is sigma 3 and uh, if you so like so this is at uh, and then you have two circles actually ok both are unreinforced. So, what we say is that if you put uh, uh, confinement or you know reinforcement uh, it behaves similar to a composite. Earlier you have a reinforced soil of only you know for these two you know it is a uh, friction is there which is under for uh, corresponding to unreinforced soil and uh, by this process of uh, additional confinement what we have done is that there is a cohesion that gets developed that gets mobilized we try to say that and it is called pseudo confining pseudo uh, pseudo cohesion. So, like we tend to use some sort of pseudo cohesion uh, earlier it was only c is 0 and phi equal to some number say 30 degrees. Now, because of this like you know the failure you know the thing is earlier that the, you had two circles now, uh, for for the same uh, sigma 1 you have a higher normal stress taking 
I hope you can understand that it is a sigma 1 without reinforcement now sigma 3 is same then what I did I, I put some sort of reinforcement and I applied load. So, it yields at a point called sigma 3 right it yields at a point called sigma 3 and uh, so how do you now I you know I can uh, get a tangent here I can draw a tangent. So, this extra confining this is uh, what is called you know C cohesion you have this uh, advantage. So, for the same normal stress it is able to because of the higher you know we are trying to represent the effect of reinforcement by this cohesion that is what it means ok. What you are trying to do is that we are trying to characterize the effect of reinforcement that is what you are doing here ok. Because if you are trying to design a, a reinforced soil what is that one understanding is that yeah it increases cohesion. So, in a factor of safety calculation if you know how to calculate C using reinforcement. So, C equal to 0 phi equal to 30 say it gives a factor of safety of 1.2 then put C equal to 10 20 kPa and phi is same then the factor of safety could be 1.8 or something which means safe. So, that cohesion you can calculate here ok this is what earlier people are doing. So, the advantage you know people have realized that uh, the reinforced soil technique is going to be very effective. So, it has three components one is a reinforcing element like a strip or a grid or a sheet or you know anything then facing units to prevent soil from erosion it can be precast uh, concrete panels that we see metal sheets and plates gabions welded wire mesh short crete wrapped sheets of geocentrics anything. Then backfill soils you have some specifications here that we will discuss you, have, you can have local soils marginal materials even fly ash can be used in fact I have used uh, fly ash in many of uh, at least two projects. Uh, why is it the technique has been effective actually the thing is that we should uh, see why the reinforced soil is effective and uh, from technical angle and as well as economic angle. Uh, in terms of the technical uh, advantages see if there is a force like it reduces the forces in the soil uh, which cause failure like now there is a disturbing force and earthquake force is it up acts in the opposite direction which means that it reduces the forces in the soil which cause failure. The another important thing is that shear resistance of the soils does not dominate the design. Like earlier we had only C and phi for example, if the C is not there it is only a, 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 a sandy material it fails that is it because if you just do any stability calculations C will have a very big effect than uh, friction you know between the two like the, in, in any stability calculation use any st uh, slope stability program you have to give C you have to give phi you have to give gamma. So, gamma has a minimum uh, not uh, so much effect, but friction has good effect and uh, cohesion has a highest effect. So, but then suppose you take a sandy material cohesion is very low then it gives a problem you know the factor of safety is less. Now, with reinforced soil uh, you are able to give cohesion and now you, you see shear resistance of the soils alone uh, does not dominate the design we do not need to bother about whatever is the shear resistance available is ok. Now, you are putting a reinforcement and increasing the shear resistance that is an advantage to whatever you want. So, that way the shear resistance of the soils does not dominate the design. Then efficient use of materials say like you know the soil is poor in tension. So, you are trying to mix or add some uh, reinforcement elements which will make soil as uh, good uh, tensile carrying uh, tensile, uh, uh, tensile force carrying materials. So, you are trying to make an efficient use of materials uh, which is called say for example, the uh, both soil and uh, uh, you know uh, reinforcement if you uh, they, they have an excellent combination of properties. In fact, uh, 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 you must be knowing about uh, in soil mechanics uh, strain hardening and strain softening. Uh, if you put some sort of reinforcement strain softening will not occur I mean it, it reduces actually we will see that in some later uh, uh, lectures. The, the thing is that there is a very nice combination of uh, materials that uh, leads to a very uh, synergetic improvement like synergetic improvement means in, in association with soil alone is weak reinforcement alone you cannot do anything like. Uh, so, by combination of these two materials there is an excellent advantage. 
Then the other important point was the inherent flexibility and uh, uh, tolerance to deformation. Uh, because of this advantage, it is much more flexible and the earth pressures they get adjusted themselves and uh, there is a de de deformation tolerance is very high. See in some cases the deformation could be as they cannot some uh, de uh, retaining walls cannot take deformation it may collapse. But here there could be deformation uh, but then it could uh, stand in fact uh, I was seeing one case where the height of the retaining wall is about 42 meters and the deformation that was coming was about 450 mm. 450 mm in a regular wall is impossible even the height of the wall is 42 meters it is impossible to construct an uh, RD wall with I mean uh, regular wall with 42 meters because it needs he heavy exp I mean lot of con uh, concrete quantities and steel quantities are required. There uh, there is it, it uh, the reinforced soil technique is a very tolerant to deformation so reinforced soil structures are very useful. Then improved overall performance of the structure in the structure performance is also overall improved it's like I will tell you the classical example of uh, pavement design. If you put some reinforcement in uh, roads, uh, definitely uh, the overall performance of uh, uh, the road will be very good. Why? Because the the way it acts, uh, say for example, you know, as I said, load distribution, load distribution of the what is the concept in payments is that if there is a load traffic load that's coming, it should be well distributed. So how do you do that in the field? Actually, is because you have various uh, layers of materials that are putting, but instead of that, you put a geo grid there excellent there is no problem at all. So, the performance is it is number one the thickness of the pavement has come down number two there is a overall performance of the uh, you know uh, say load dispersion characteristics and all by somehow with this process it improves the overall performance that is a very important advantage. Then of course, the economic benefits like one is the cost savings related to other alternatives time and again people have seen that these techniques are going to be very very effective and very economical. Then these will enable the use of locally uh, available materials and poor quality fields also like as I just mentioned fly ash could be used, bottom ash could be used, in many, any materials could be used but one should do proper quality control tests and uh, see that that is all right. Uh, the other one was the land acquisition costs you know in many cases that I showed in the previous case you know like a railway uh, railway line is there land acquisition cost and either side you have to construct big slopes say for example, 1 is to 2 slopes like 2 horizontal to 1 vertical, 1 vertical to 2 horizontal if you just want a, a 10 meter embankment 10 meters plus 20 meters on the other side you have to say that uh, 20 meters is required on either side of the road and suppose they you think that they are paddy fields it is not so paddy fields are gone or if they think that there are buildings it is not possible to do at all. So, what is the best way you make it vertical using this technique you know you do not need to really uh, or make it whatever is tolerable say for example, make it 85 degrees vertical that is nice. So, there land acquisition cost could be minimum and the another advantage is less construction time on projects say for example, there is so this uh, as I said uh, it involves the use of precast elements you know uh, precast elements everything fabricated like in the RU in the reinforced uh, retaining walls you have to cure 21 days and 28 there are lot of other things here you have a precast elements which you bring reinforcement you just assemble put compaction and it starts you know you can do very fast. I have seen many projects where the cost of construction you know is very uh, well controlled and you know you can accelerate uh, projects to keep up the times uh, times uh, that are specified. Now, what is the mechanism some more? What we saw is that uh, we have seen uh, uh, some idea how it reinforcement can be effective we will understand it further. Uh, this is unreinforced soil slope uh, this is a shear resistance and the failure surface and uh, you know on the either side you have a uh, you know uh, 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 you know it tends to fail and then there is a resistance along this line and all that. Now, you are trying to put a reinforcement here 1, 2, 3 there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 layers of reinforcement and they have an inclination at some uh, theta degrees okay you have uh, to the failure surface you know these are failure surface 
and then there it is an angle theta uh, this uh, uh, reinforcements are placed. So, how does it act? We have to see and quantify, we will see that. See this is analogous to a direct shear box, you apply some uh, vertical force, there is a shear force right and uh, what happens this is a soil without reinforcement and in this soil element uh, which is uh, under shear there is a compressive force like you know because of this uh, movement in this direction uh, there is a you know it is uh, compressed in one sense like so there is a compressive strain there is a tensile strain like in this direction it is a tensile stress is acting and in this direction there is a compressive stress acting both the perpendicular and uh, how do you get the shear force? Shear force is nothing but I assume that it is sand C plus sigma tan phi right or P resisting force is nothing but P V tan phi you know we know the fr friction angle of the soil and like you know um, shear stress uh, shear strength equal to sigma tan phi. It is not strength now it is just a force only because we know the area of cross section. So, we try to put us uh, this. Now, what is happening here? If you put a reinforcement what is happening? This is uh, say the way that we put was we are trying to put in the direction of tensile strains little bit ok. Because you have to if you want to take advantage of the reinforcement you should put in the direction of tensile force. So, I am putting in this direction ok. Then this is that angle whatever ok. Now, what I am trying to do is that this is a shear force acting. Now, because of the reinforcement, so actually I have a PR reinforcement force PR in this. So, PR if you just resolve into two components PR sin theta, PR cos theta you will get. So, the shear force PS you know uh, there is some uh, opposite directions acting. So, the way that I do is that now shearing resistance for soil alone is P V tan phi that we have seen earlier. Now, reduction in shear force is P R sin phi as a sin theta as I said no like this is a uh, so you have to theta you have to resolve P R sin theta P R cos theta will get. So, what is the uh, reduction shear force? It is P S is acting, but this is much is reduced now. So, P R sin theta is reduced. So, it is reducing the uh, forces shear force forces causing uh, instability like whatever is a disturbing force or the shear force it is reducing by P R sin theta. Then the other one was it is a P R cos theta it increases a shear force like you know say P V is already acting say for example, there is already a load acting you cannot uh, remove it you cannot shear it. Now, with this what is happening you have a P R cos theta extra added. So, you, you definitely cannot remove it shearing you know like see normal stress is acting it is a shear stress if uh, higher is a normal stress higher is a shear stress. So, if you apply more force you cannot remove it naturally. So, you have P R, P R cos theta tan phi ok that you have to resolve into that uh, angle. So, this is uh, say this is uh, angle right tan phi in this direction of uh, angle ok. The increase in uh, force causing a shear right increasing uh, so total shear resistance is nothing but P V tan phi plus you know this is an extra component that comes here. Now, because of this uh, reinforcement action P R sin theta plus cos theta tan phi ok. So, you know tan phi why is it tan phi? you know this is a normal force P R cos theta into you are calculating the force right and so this is a normal force you have to multiply it by tan phi to get into that shear force right. So, P V tan phi plus P R so this is actually the extra shear resistance you are getting earlier it was only P V tan phi you are getting this much. Now, you see that uh, this is a function of theta which means the angle and also the friction angle of the soil right. So, we will just write a simple uh, calculation like increase in shear resistance P sin theta plus cos theta tan phi and uh, reinforcement orientation. So, what is happening here is that the best orientation is like you know you can see you can plot like this diagrams 
right this is all principal strains directions. So, in this angle you can see that it is maximum like you know it is in the range of say 1 or you know a little higher whatever you can just uh, put some numerical values in these numbers like you know you can put some uh, numbers here whatever numbers you want uh, and then you know like uh, P R P V some uh, reasonable numbers and see that. So, you will get this sort of diagrams and it only shows that the uh, between 30 to 60 degrees the angle of inclination okay uh, they, there is an optimum uh, benefit and it increases as phi of the soil is more that is all it shows like so that is good. So, this particular thing uh, leads to the uh, condition that say for example, you it is a very interesting observation that uh, uh, say I will uh, take the previous example. You see this you know even uh, you know this particular inclination what so it will be in the, in the same angle you know the way that we try to do in the construction like you know uh, you are trying if you play re uh, re uh, place reinforcements in the while doing construction they will be at an angle 30 to 60 degrees the, uh, the difference is not much the angle is maybe say 40 degrees that angle is always achieved. Uh, in the case of footing how the bearing capacity is there failure surface is like this you put uh, reinforcement like this it intersects the failure surface in the same angle roughly 30 to 40 degrees. So, what it means is that in many geotechnical operations it is very easy very nice to uh, use this technique like you know normally what you are doing in geotechnical thing you just put a layer of soil and then put a reinforce uh, put a, again put one more layer and then compact it put one more layer compact it. But here what you are doing okay, you are doing compaction then put a layer of geograde like say for example, there is a wheel load coming under the wheel load the bearing capacity is less because bearing capacity failure surface is on log spiral. But if you put a reinforcement there what happens the and then it, it will be actually having the same angle roughly 30 to 40 60 degrees you know by because the failure surface is like this like a log spiral and it intersects that um, uh, reinforcement at that angle roughly and you will have a maximum effect. So, for reinforcement applications of bearing capacity or even slope stability and many of these things it is an excellent uh, technique because number one you can uh, do it very easily in the field number one. So, for example, uh, this is very important how uh, the ease with which the technique can be done in the field because uh, you do not need to change many of your techniques see I uh, will give you an, another example uh, people have discovered that uh, precessed concrete is very useful in uh, RCC construction but the technique itself is so specialized you will not have many uh, pre-stressed concrete uh, structures uh, specialists and you, you have an RCC specialist suddenly you cannot ask him to become a pre-stressed concrete expert. Here it is not so ask him to put a layer of geograde extra and then ask him to compact he is very happy because you, you can tell him that yes you are going to have a significant difference and uh, the project is going to be finished in uh, you know a shorter time and also that. Uh, it can be economical. So, this is precisely the reason that uh, this technique has been uh, very very useful in geotechnical uh, um, construction whether it is for the improvement of slope stability by nailing reinforced soil or improvement of bearing capacity and all that. Uh, so, in a simple say it is yes it is very useful and uh, one more uh, so this is uh, the precisely the reason that you know so for example, you can see like between uh, about 40 degrees to about 60 degrees whatever is that uh, you have a failure surface and then if you put a reinforcement the angle is not uh, in the same range roughly. So, that is an advantage. Um, so, you will get a uh, so this is precisely the reason why many people have uh, embraced this technology without much uh, reservations and the advantage is that the three people who are very happy contractor is very happy because the owner first of all owner is very happy because he has number one uh, cost effective solution then he also has as just mentioned technical advantage as well as economic advantage. Then the contractor is first one is a uh, owner owner is very happy then the designer is also very happy because he is able to give some design now using this reinforced soil you can simply has to say that yes you put a reinforcement like this you will have a good benefit. The third one contractor is also very happy because he is able to finish the project very fast and it has been very useful.
So, these three groups of people if they agree together then it is nice right. So, before we go further uh, we should be able to understand uh, what is this uh, you know you have a now a backfill right soil is there and uh, uh, soil is to be compacted because to have a very good effect the soil has to be compacted. So, this is a backfill soil properties like we know that um, if you uh, have a uh, say normally we are trying to use sands as backfill materials in many of the flyover projects and uh, so loose sand will behave like this ok. Like it, it reaches a critical uh, volume critical state volume uh, at this point then you have peak in the case of dense it is like this this is what I was mentioning as strain softening right. So, now this is an in the case of drained in the case of undrained test you say you will have a pore pressure mobilized this is a the sigma 1 minus sigma the derivative stress in the case of uh, you know uh, drain test you will measure volume change also these are all various types of uh, stress strain curves that we see. What we need to see is the uh, how both reinforced soil as well as how the reinforced soil behaves. And as I just mentioned uh, we have uh, different types of reinforcement elements one is called one can be a steel reinforcement in the case of uh, like in a steel reinforcement or like a geo grid uh, like a uh, uh, steel steel grid you know it is very stiff stress and properties are very good you know stiffness is there. Then you have a geotextile very flexible then geo grid may be in, in between like you know it is a geo grid is much better than geo textile in terms of the stiffness that is the reason why we use it in many of the applications even uh, the steel also we use you know like uh, there are companies that only supply steel as a reinforcement there are some companies which only supply geo grid as a reinforcement there are also some companies which use a geo composite you know because sometimes you want high drainage drainage in a uh, uh, drainage in some applications plus reinforcement you have this in fact uh, for one of the projects which I saw I was mentioning about 42 meter high wall they used a geo composite which acts both as a tungsten material as well as geo grid material right. So, uh, so you have this material and you also have uh, what is called uh, properties of the soils. So, how do they match? Uh, this is very important because as I just mentioned uh, the performance of the reinforced soil is a function of the force mobilized in the reinforcement is it not. So, for example, you apply some force you apply some load and you have a reinforcement uh, this thing the, the moment uh, there is a force developed in the reinforcement then it takes care of that load like you know there is a one component of that load uh, the uh, tensile force that comes into picture it starts acting. So, how fast it can act? Uh, before it takes more deformation is very important. You will see that here that uh, as I said in the case of loose materials say for example, uh, so you can uh, know that uh, in a you take a reinforcement in the case of a stiff reinforcement what happens? this is a stiff reinforcement here uh, this is a stiff reinforcement available force above av available force in the reinforcement right. Um, so, like you know in the, the actually force the, the way that it force is developed is as higher is the strain higher is the force in the reinforcement like say for example, uh, a stiff strain in the reinforcement the stiff in the case of a stiff reinforcement you need less strain to go to uh, to see that the force is mobilized stress is mobilized in the reinforcement. So, in the case of a stiff material you have a point here right which will have uh, low strain. Now, you come to a, a flexible member you have a higher strain level. So, for example, this could be say for example, 0.1 percent this could be 4 percent right this. So, but then what is this? This is you know like you have seen one more the, what is this diagram? It is in the actually it is a uh, loose in the case of loose materials we said that uh, 
there is a con you know the uh, we have seen in the previous uh, figure right dilation and uh, uh, you know the uh, the dilation say so if you just compress a loose sand it continues to compress right like you know 0 0.1 to say maybe 10 percent it continues to compress. Whereas, in the case of a dense material um, it is like this you know the thing is uh, there is an initial compression then it starts increasing right this is what uh, the uh, the uh, so this is an important uh, thing. So, because of this what happens is that uh, in the case of loose material uh, the uh, strain say for example, the uh, you know to uh, say in the case of stiff materials uh, th this is a force I mean this actually the combination of this you know this point uh, say in the case of stiff material uh, and then this is a loose one you have one point this is another point this is another point. So, uh, the we are trying to calculate the stress strain in the reinforcement as well as the strain in the soil depending on the type of soil depending on the state of the soil whether it is loose or sand. So, this type of diagram is called strain compatibility diagram and this is very important why because say you have a loose material um, the reinforcements you know the re resistance only comes the moment there is a contact and then the strain gets developed. So, in this case you can see that uh, say you take this case. Uh, these two. See, in the case of uh, dense material, uh, the strain required is marginally lower than this. You know, there are small differences. Like if you just draw two vertical lines, lines here, this value is somewhat. This is a dense material. This value, say, maybe 0.2 percent or maybe 0.5 percent. This may be 1 percent. The strain required in the case of uh, loose sand is little higher compared to that of loose uh, uh, dense sand. Here, you can see big difference like strain required in the case of loose sand is much higher compared to that of dense sand. The same is the case particularly if it is flexible and if it is loose it is you mean a lot of strains, but whereas here it is quite less. So, as high as so this is an important advantage that if you compact it very well you will have this sort of behavior you know. Do you know dense, dense materials tend to dilate right when the when there is a tendency to dilate the and then you do not allow the things to dilate what happens the effective stress increases is it not the effective stress increases uh, because of uh, stopping of the dilation tendency because there is no place for dilation in the reinforced soil. So, all are compacted and all that so that dilation it acts on the reinforcement. So, once it starts acting on the reinforcement the more force is generated. So, you can see that the state of the you know uh, loose sand or dense sand whatever it is is quite important and also the stiffness of the soil is also important. So, this is what is called a strain compatibility diagram and this is very important in the analysis of reinforced soil structures. Uh, particularly you know um, a density all specifications come on these lines ok. So, there are many techniques that uh, people have been using in the actual construction and uh, we will I will show you some of them and uh, as I said reinforced soil is a construction technique ok. It is uh, uh, and then the performance I mean the reinforced soil the way it uh, behaves in the field is a function of how well you construct. If you do a hopeless job definitely it collapses maybe if the principle is very good, but uh, it fails because if you do not implement it properly. What you should do like say for example, there are different methods in the olden days you know that to when the soil was developed like uh, well, this is called concertina method this is one of the methods that is uh, quoted in literature like you take some you know they are all in uh, uh, sheets you know you can have aluminum sheets or whatever sheets because I told you if you have a reinforcement like this the earth pressure coming on the uh, uh, facing is minimum, but then what happens you are trying to connect the uh, facing and the reinforcement is it not you have to connect it. So, because of that some force gets transferred to the reinforcement also. So, for which say for example, that there is a so much tensile force how do you calculate tensile force at any point is nothing, but 
say for uh, if geotextile you are using, geotextile has more uh, tendency for deformation. So, I use Ka, Ka into sigma V will be the horizontal force acting and uh, suppose I am talking about uh, SV is a vertical spacing and SH is per meter length. So, I am using say per meter length of the geotextile uh, 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 Ka into SV into uh, K into sigma v into S v will give me the horizontal force acting at any point, is it not? So, you, are, you know the spacing and you know the uh, vertical stress, vertical stress is nothing but gamma into height. So, gamma b you know bulk density. So, you will be able to know what is the lateral force and that much is a uh, lateral force that should be generated by friction, so that it opposites op acts in the opposite direction. So, that much force you can calculate by this expression. Uh, like which I said Ka into sigma v into uh, S, uh, Sv, Sv is a vertical spacing. So, that gives a hardened force at any point and uh, that, that should be equal to the tensile force in the reinforcement, Jot, say per meter length of the, so I said 10, 10 kilo Newton per meter or 15 kilo Newton per meter, like what it means that okay, it needs that reinforced soil uh, wall needs 10 kilo Newtons in the opposite direction. So, take a go to the um, literature, such a material that has that property like you take any of the geotextile material that you have, it will be say 25 kilo Newton per meter, meter or 50 kilo Newton per meter, it is fine for us because as I said if I have a 50, 50 kilo Newton per meter and I only need 10 kilo Newton per meter then the factor of safety is 5 roughly in a working stress method of design, but then uh, having that uh, 50 you have a damage factor then you have time uh, uh, factor for uh, creep cap uh, factor for environmental conditions, factor for uh, what I said the, uh, lifetime, all that there are some 3 or 4 factors that we will discuss in the next class that once you do all those factors like you know, say the 50 divided by 1.1 divided by 1.3 into 1.6 like that, you will get some number which could be uh, say 15. So, that 15 is more than the 10 required, so it is fine. So, that is how we have to do the design and once you are able to design at every step in a some simple sense, then uh, of course, there is lot of sophistication involved, but in a way the principle is that you must be able to design all the spacing and all the reinforcement like this and uh, the, the I mean spacing of the reinforcement. The length of the reinforcement is again as I said, uh, you have a 45 minus 5 by 2 angle here like a failure plane, that length uh, you had again calculated the friction. You, you have already calculated tensile force, there much that uh, frictional force should be whatever is a, a frictional force should be twice of this uh, tensile force mobilized. Like as I said tensile force is uh, K A sigma V, uh, I mean uh, I mean sigma V into S V right. So, that is a tensile force. So, then you have to from uh, the uh, uh, where it cuts you know that you know the frictional area of the a geotextile like you know that you have to calculate per meter length again. If you are able to calculate a friction force along the geotextile, it, if it is more than twice this it is alright. That is how the simple design is done and uh, the way that it is practiced in the field is that you have a concrete panel facings and you have some sort of uh, this thing here like uh, so uh, this is in some two spacings of you know 250 mm, it is in terms of the compaction lift thicknesses. and. Uh, these are there are different methods of doing that and we will see more of this in the uh, coming classes because uh, uh, this is one technique uh, that has uh, uh, you know made a very big in impact in infrastructure you know construction of flyovers and all that ok. Uh, this is another one that I would like to show like say for example, uh, uh, you also have some drainage elements here, uh, this is another method. So, you have you know even this can be a, a gabion type of wall, you can put reinforcement like this, geogrids like this, so flexible and in the case of slope also it can be done like this. Actually you know you can have different types of facings you know, this is we call it full full height uh, facing you know like as I said uh, in one case the way that we did was that we uh, made uh, some wall, some members you know two members we could we put directly concrete into that put joined see the geotext geogrid was inside this then we had a shuttering like this then put uh, some uh, uh, RCC you know just to have a facing. You can do lot of things and uh, as I just showed the other day uh, you also have um, 
uh, what is it? segmental blocks. Segmental blocks means see this may be a big height panels may be difficult to handle, but you may have a simple uh, what is that uh, interlocking concrete wall blocks. You know the where which can interlock and you know uh, to one fellow can lift it and put it. The other fellow will take the reinforcement and stretch it. Then uh, you compact it here. Then again one fellow will put this and then uh, put this and like this. You know they keep on doing it and then you do whatever you want. So, that is it. So, once the design is complete essentially we are looking at the set pressures and all that it is very safe because safety is very clear. I, I showed you that fundamental principle in which uh, as long as the uh, uh, forces are within the be below the yields of the whatever that the failure surface it is going to be safe. So, uh, you, you have to properly look at some of these fundamentals and you can uh, one can construct you know is it not. So, I this is what I meant to say and uh, I am sure that you know this is one technology that has uh, revolutionized the cost of uh, um, uh, infrastructure. In fact, in ground improvement projects say for example, you are constructing a bank and a soft soil like uh, earlier we are using stone columns, stone columns are being used still, but you put a geograde at the top or bottom you know it helps a lot. Even in a, a stone column you can put uh, what is called uh, uh, encasement of uh, you know say as I said we know the failure mechanisms of stone columns in which there is a bulb formation and all that you you put a, a, a some sort of a confinement the bulb will not form the bulb if it does not form it is very good you know because bulb formation is because of it is a failure mechanism if you do not allow the failure mechanism to take place it is an excellent thing. So, like that it has even uh, for PVDs and many ground improvement projects it has taken a, even geo cells will discuss it has really impacted in a big way. Thank you.